Hello, hello, hello. And so we come to talk about, well, it's, it's there, but we're going to do that as well. We'll do it all. I-O. 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 Oh, ow. Oh, I dropped it. Just fell off. Um, Peter Gabriel's 10th studio album. It's been a long... It's been a long birthing process. <laughs> Io again. Io was intended originally to be the the follow up to us. That was the that was the. It goes back that far. It goes that back that far. That name, but then he swapped it out for Up, which then clashed with um, REM's album um, that was coming out at the time. And Gable joked that he was up shit creek which I always found amusing uh, back in the day. God, this is ancient history, ancient history. So yeah, it finally was released this year, the year of our Lord, 2023, 1st of December. And for those who signed up, there was the Bandcamp. Gable used Bandcamp. Bandcamp is a, is a, a musician's platform online platform where little people little musicians can publish their music and get it out there and Gabriel comes in and does a monthly a subscription thing where he, he dribbles out a song a month there's two three mixes a month that you get for your three quid so it's like a pound for every song uh, and so yeah it's it's been a long drawn out 2023 I did review some of the stuff um as it came out, I got bored with that because <laughs> I wasn't enjoying it. Because I like the album, I like the album as a format. I believe I believe in the album. Um, so yeah, to have uh, the songs dribbled out to me, I found a little bit heavy going. I found it hard going, but that's just me. Remember, this is all my opinion. None of it accounts for anything other than you're here to hear me witter on and it's all meaningless well, if you boil it all down it's all meaningless and again I guess that could be one of the themes of this record it opens with Panopticom this is him taking Jeremy ben Bentham's Panopticon idea i.e. the circular prison where everyone can see each other and pushing it out to com communications he's created a new word there I find that utterly irritating because <laughs> it's language. But again, um, it kind of references Gable's witness program that he's been involved in since the 80s where they gave photograph uh, for photograph again, cameras. In the old days, it was old-fashioned cameras. Now, I guess it would be digital devices so people can photograph the social injustices that they are facing in various totalitarian regimes around the world. And in Gabriel's song, he's looking forward to a future where we can all see what's going on. Um, again, this is quite naive. The song is a, quite a naive thing now. I mean, I see it as a, a, as a totalitarian future where we're all spying on each other. So, yeah, I don't, I don't really care much for it. I mean, it's a nice enough track and everything, and I quite like the fact that there's some acoustic guitar in there. But again, Gable's, you know, naive is quite evident. And again, it's 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 quite old fashioned there because with the advent of AI imagery and things being faked. I mean, crikey, even uh, the October 7th attack by Hamas on Israel, people, and, even, and that was videoed because people have got, I haven't got my mobile to hand, but people have got cameras on their phones, you know, 4K cameras, and even that footage has been denied by people like, you know, Roger Waters, ex of Pink Floyd, as, you know, well, but they could it's it's an inside job sort of thing. So even if you've got people taking video, high quality video of events around the world, it's no we live in a, such a sceptical time where people believe in conspiracy theories that even that's made that song redundant. <laughs> Again he needed he needed a an extra an extra verse where he spoke about people not believing what they see 
you know, because in the old in the old days the saying was, you know, seeing is believing. We now live in a time where seeing is disbelieving, because people are so heavily rooted into their own ideologies and belief systems that even if you present them with evidence, they go, "Well, it could be faked." You know, so Panopticon, yeah, it would have been great in 1980 when the witness thing was was new, but. For 2023, no, no good. This is followed up by the court. Again, I've done deeper reviews of these separately, so go and find those if you want. I'm trying to skirt through these. Uh, The court, uh, again, this is about like the court of public opinion. This is about you know social how social media. We're all judged. Um, It's a bit clunky. Some of the lyrics are clunky. You know, the baby throwing up its chocolate milk and all that. Uh, I I find some of the lyrical some of the lyrical chops on this a little bit dubious, but we'll get to that with, with the title track. Um but again, he's trying to tackle something that's, you know, happening now. It's a Neil song cuz I guess we're all victim to public opinion because of via social media. Um you know, trial by social media. Um, but musically and lyrically, I find it a bit, just a bit clunky, a bit clunky. But I like that. again, again, this is like Panopticon. There are bits on it, like the acoustic strummy bit. There are bits of each song I really like. Like the court, there's the the refrain at the end. They say that justice is blind, and I, and I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Which is classic Gabriel, you know. Um, in terms of a tune and vocal delivery, so there are bits that I like and bits that I don't like. You know, I'm being, no, I am, just you know me playing for time. Starts with um, Chopin's funeral march. Oh yes, oh yes, indeed, uh, march funebre. I think is its proper name. Um, it's a. Dun, 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 dun. Da, 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 da. We get, and so again, there's a lot of that on this album. I don't come here for misery. I don't come here for woe. I, I come to be lifted, Gabriel. I come to be taken away from the the thoughts of my impending mortality. Uh, but throughout this album, mortality is it's runs through it like a the letters of a you know, stick of of seaside rock, and. Uh, and playing for time we're all playing for time again you're wasting your time listening to me I've got I'm nearly done eight minutes already this could be a long one no um yeah he's stating the obvious we're all playing for time I know now, Io is the one I've got the most problem with because he's got stuff coming in and stuff coming out. And the word stuff. Oh, stuff, man. Oh, it just grind, it grinds my gears. I quite like, again, I quite like, I quite like the song. But the words really irritate me. Irritate me. Irritate They They trip me up. And I did actually come up with... In my head, an alternate lyric that fits the tune, which does away with the word stuff. You know, about you know, being, you know, it, again, I can't remember. I haven't really, I didn't write it down, but it was about being in your environment and, you know, and, you know, your environment, you take your environment in and you, you broadcast it out again, sort of thing. It's along those lines. And, but I didn't use the word stuff. I was cleverer than Peter Gabriel. And, you know, some of the quotes, Buzzy Bee Sting. Oh, it's just, <laughs> oh dear, irritating. Uh, best track on the album for me is track five, Four Kinds of Horses, which I just, I really, really like. And um, that's the keeper. That's the good one. I really like it. I think it works. I think the sentiment of it works. And again, it's about, it, well, you can be, it can be, Held up against many things, politics, people that you know are just out for power. It's uh, you know that thing of 
you say you're different, but you do it all again, and nothing changing. And I, I like the sentiment of that song. That song is my top tip of the record. Road to Joy. Um, oh, it's about being locked in syndrome. No, it's about an old man getting his jollies. It's about Peter Gable's erection. Um, <laughs> and it's, um, you know, it's it's one step away from, was it Steam? And things like that. So much again. It's sentiment. There's a similar sentiment to playing for time. Oh, there's so much thing. So many things I want to do, but I'm running out of time. No, 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 no. I want my old men angry and snarling. I want them. I want my old men to be dragged screaming and kicking from this world. You know, that's how I'm going to be. I'm going to be angry and annoyed at how fucking stupid the world is. Not, oh, 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 I've got so much I want to do, but time is running out. Boo-hoo, boo-hoo, I don't care. I really don't care. Um, Olive Tree, again, is another one. It's very similar to Road to Joy. It's a celebration of life. Um, it's about getting his rocks off again. I think. I can't remember what the lyrics are. Is that the one where you jump into the lake? I'm the I'm the snake or something? Or was that or was that Road to Joy? I can't remember. I've listened to this album so much. This is probably considering it, I think of all the albums I've ever reviewed, this album I've I've listened to in various ways most ever. And it didn't help. But when people say to you, you should listen to an album more, no, it just breeds contempt. It breeds con total contempt. Um, but yeah, stuff on Olive Tree kind of loop back to I go swimming, you know, enjoying you know, being in the water, in nature, the sun. You know, it's a celebration of life. Yeah, I can get behind that. Love Can Heal, again, I, the slower tracks like Four Kinds of Horses, Love Can Heal, and the, the later part of the album, I appreciate more than the livelier pieces love can heal it's a nice, really nice piece i really like it um but you know it's you don't want a whole album of that you know but i do like i do like that track a lot and it's again it's a it's love can heal but also time time takes time heals too um, this is home uh, for all the homebodies out there. I like that song <laughs> I like that one too. Um, and still, is about the death, of, the death of his mother again. He did father son, which you know that one. All that song always gets to me. But what we have with father son, which is which is brevity and a very sparse arrangement. And I think sometimes you can deliver a lot more emotion when everything is stripped back and it's just the musician, the voice and the instrumentation, you know, very stripped back. You get more emotion than when you have a, a, a more produced version. And still, again, it's it's detailed, the, the death of his mother. We've done this before and I grieve on Up. And... Yeah, a lovely song, but too long. It's seven minutes again. A lot of these songs, you know, head towards the seven minute mark, and I lose it. I lose interest. I really do. I lose interest in that. Not that I think everything should be, you know, three minutes a pop song, but when you start going over, you know, the five minute mark. The song had better be bloody good. And and in that one, it's there's a whole instrumental section that. If I was producing, I would have excised. I would have stripped it back. I would have kept it down to the thing. And there's a, I think there's an extra verse in there that could be pulled out. And that could be a really tight four-minute song with a real emotional gut punch. But it drags on. Uh, we end with Live and Let Live. No. Live and Let Die. Everyone knows it's Live and Let Die. Um, again, I quite like the sentiment of this song. And, but then it goes a little bit wonky towards the end. I like this idea of, of you know being in debt to the burden you're carrying. Again, if you've been involved in traumatic issues, and in my life, I've, there's been many of those things. I know that you can be burdened with it, and I was. And something happened in my life which I was, you know, in the middle of, and I, I employed a very wise man, a very expensive man. 
not actually to give me advice on it, but he was there to help me deal with an insurance claim. And he told me, he said, look, you got to let go. <laughs> Again, this is what I paid my 17, 18,000 pounds on. That's what his fee was. But he said, he, he told me some, some truths that only wise men know because he dealt with a lot of people in a similar situation. He said, you can't carry this. You've got to let it go. You've got to let it go. And it helped me. And it helped me well, again, I, a lot of things, it changed me fundamentally. That whole instant changed me. And that sentiment is put down in this song. And I think it's, again, if you just look at it as a personal song about the, the various burdens that you carry, yeah, great. But then he starts going about put down your weapons and it becomes like an anti-war song and he starts invoking uh, the, the elders. You know, cause that's another organisation. Again, like Witness, he invokes them. So we have Mandela and Tutu and... William Blake, I think it was William Blake mentioned, and it goes a little bit awry and becomes his, you know, um, all you need is love, give, you know, give peace a chance, happy Christmas, war is over. It's very Beatlesy. Again, there's a lot of Beatles kind of influence in it because he insists on using the fucking strings, and I can't stand rock stars when they use, you know, like a orchestral string arrangements in their pieces because you just end up thinking back to the Beatles because they did it they did it the best you know and I don't I don't really think it's lazy I think it's re it's because they don't have any confidence in their playing or the people that are playing with them because there are guitarists there are keyboard players that could you know fill those spaces you know or other instrument other instrumentalists which he would have used in the past you know and this is what's lacking the lack of guest stars the lack of other voices the lack of you know interest in instrumentation um that's what's missing on this record but yeah I like the track but it's flawed and it gets a little bit you know, hold your lighter up or mobile phone in this day and age. Um, and But you get a lovely kind of gospel-y, is it some South African choir at the end, which is just, it's nice. But if it had been more of personal stuff, and again, for me with Gabriel, it's all about songs resonating with you. And very few of the songs resonate with me. With God, the opening track of Up, for example, Darkness, which is all about confronting your fears, resonated with me because I'd felt those fears, you know, and I really like that song. Again, just listen to Darkness <laughs> and compare it to anything on this record, and you can hear what you know what what production and arrangement can be, you know, because there's a lot going on in that song, and you don't just you don't kind of get that sureness with this record it's tentative it's a little it feels a little bit you know a little bit unsure um so everyone's been saying oh it's his greatest record ever superlatives superlatives oh, oh it's great oh. Um, no it's not it's not we all know that so is his greatest record <laughs> um the problem is right it's a great record in this in this moment of mediocrity where you know you've got Stephen Wilson and this this is fucking compared to Stephen Wilson this is a million dark side of the moons isn't it but then you look at you compare it to his own back catalogue and that's where it you know it doesn't hold up I mean it, it, it feels more akin to Peter Gable 2 than anything else and that's not a bad thing because I really like Peter Gable 2 but the thing about Peter Gable too, it had a kind of homespun, undercooked feel to it, you know, but that was deliberate because it was a, a very quick album. This wasn't a quick album. This is 21 years, and I expect more for my 21 years, you know, and that's, again, this is me as a fan talking. Your mileage is different. You love it. I get it, but don't tell me I'm wrong. You know, I'm really not interested because you're deluding yourself if you think this is a better album than than up even or so are us it isn't um because i said it before and i'll say it again without somebody producing him we end up with this and he needs somebody there to say can we what what are we aiming to do can we maybe edit that down yeah we've repeated that over there i mean there's one of one of the lines i can't remember which song it was maybe it was the call one of the lines there's a 
there's a direct lift from digging in the dirt. Go, the guitar goes, da -da -da -da. and you go, that lick is straight from digging in the dirt. And if there was a producer in there, they'd go, no, no, you can't do that. Play something different. Play something else. Um, and this is why I bemoan the fact that a lot of legacy artists produce themselves now, whereas all the all the hip young kids getting producers because they want to, they want their songs to be on the radio, and they want their songs to be replayed and you know to be catchy and hooky, and you know the production is important. So that's the album. It's it's okay at this moment in time. There's nothing to drag me back to listen to it again, but that could be because of the way it was released because we were dribbled one song at a time. And I've listened to it an awful long lot, you know, also the different versions. That doesn't help, but we're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, I have nothing here to call me back. I do not want to hear this record for another 21 years. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Um, but for me, standout track, Four Kinds of Horses, um, Love Can Heal, This Is Home, and Still, Live and Let Live. That last bit, I think, is... pleasant but you don't want a whole album like it and the more lively tracks just you know they either echo previous songs like you know steam or kiss that frog you know or they you know i don't know they just like i say yeah it doesn't work for me but then you've got the different mixes <laughs> You got the different. There are three different mixes. You have the bright side, dark side, and inside mix. Of course you do, because because that's what we got. That's what we have to have now. Um, yeah. So on the dark side mix, it's Chad Blake. On the bright side mix, it's Mike Spike Stent and Hans Martin Buff doing the inside mix, which is a Dolby Atmos. We'll do the Dolby Atmos first. Um, again, I have a problem with Dolby Atmos. I don't have a Dolby Atmos system. I have a 7.1 Dolby surround sound system. Um, and every Atmos mix I hear that's been folded into 7.1 or 5.1 just feels odd to me. It just doesn't feel right. I'm not a. I'm not keen on on Atmos at the moment. I've not been totally convinced by it there's always something that sounds a bit off and i don't know if it's this fold down mix that they do um with the with this record there was some bass coming out my, my rear speakers and that's a mixing no no you do not put the bass out the rear speakers because you can damage them rear speakers you need to channel it to the center and a little bit out the subwoofer everyone knows that schoolboy error not good don't appreciate it Okay, so the surround sound mix and some of the mixing, oh God, some of the weird mixing stuff, there's bits of these vocal that kind of just fade off and disappear. Um, the splash at the end of, um, is it Olive Tree or the other one? I get mixed up. I don't, I don't pay attention to, to track names unless they've actually mentioned the thing in the thing. You know, Sledgehammer mentions Sledgehammer. Olive Tree doesn't mention Olive Tree. Well, Road to Joy does, though. But I'm getting off the point. The surround sound mix, like I said, there's some very odd choices. Now, I don't know if it's done deliberately or if it's this fold down because it folds down and Dolby, Dolby, Dolby Atmos, which is so many sound sources, is it? Something like 27 into 5, 7.1, whatever. And I don't know if it's that. So I was completely underwhelmed by the surround sound mix. Mm. The digital, the digital mix, because we'll call it digital, the CD version. Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's okay. Nothing to complain about. But however, however, it's the vinyl. It's the vinyl that wins. Not because it sounds particularly better, but the track listing is slightly different. It's slightly modified on the vinyl. Uh, they move around some tracks, and so it flows a bit better. You don't have the court and panopticon together. You have um, playing for time in the middle, and it it breaks it up nicely. It's just it, it creates an undulation that you should be aiming for in a track in a track run. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed the vinyls. Uh, the best mix is the 
I've got dark side mix I enjoy the most and it's only because the splash is louder on the dark side mix that is features on this record um, so so yeah I think that's it I think I think I've done it I think that is the whole thing um, in a, like I say in the desert in the wilderness of, of music at the moment this is a welcome oasis I welcome it it's just a shame that it, I probably would have liked it more if it hadn't been dribbled to me I think that really spoilt the whole process for me because I like albums albums are special to me right and we live in a time now, again, in this post-cultural world that we live in, that albums aren't important. You know, it's songs. It's not even songs now. I mean, they, their songs are reduced to 30-second TikTok clips. Did you know that? You know, They're actually producing and mixing for 30-second clips now. So we've gone from, we've gone from the 7-inch single to the EP to the album, right, to the CD... CD single to the download uh, to the song to the 30 second clip that is the tangent of music that's that's where we're, we're heading with all of this so um, yeah I mean I think that really spoiled my enjoyment of the whole thing uh, and of course it was very hard for me as a fan to stay away for a year come on, you was asking too much of me Pete, asking too much of me but, you know, like I said, it's it's a welcome. It's a welcome album. And hopefully there's another one coming out soon because he has mentioned the next album. Okay. <laughs> so that's going to be good. But Pete, Pete, you need to go back and look at texture. You need to go back and look at your previous records like So and Us and even a little bit of Up where you had guest artists on. You used your vast knowledge of world music to bring in unusual textures that makes the ear go, oh, there's none of that on this. This is really trad. This is really trad. That's why, like I said, it's more like uh, Peter Gabriel too in terms of its arrangement and the way it's played. It's really oh, a little bit of one, one's overblown production, but it's really traditional. Whereas from three onwards there was weird stuff happening samples you know world music is leeching in and i mean even the um the soweto gospel choir that's used on this um you don't really get that south african influence it sounds like a like a gospel choir that could have come from america you know you don't get that that world music influence like we would have gone you know back in back in the day you know you need some, I don't know, duduk players on it and stuff like that, you know. And so, <laughs> this is, you know, this is just because I, I mean, I'm involved in all, you know. This is the thing. I'm, I'm too, too far in. I'm too far in. For me, Peter Gabe was the guy that set me on this road, you know. After Queen, my boys, it was Peter Gabriel, and that was special to me, you know. And that's why I come to this. And I'm like, almost a fan. I, I stop being a connoisseur and I become, you know, quite involved. And that's why, you know, I want it to be the best album ever. I want it to be that I really wanted it to be the best album ever. But the great thing to come out of it is it makes me really appreciate Up for what it was. Up, I think, is a much better record now. Because it's got given me something more to compare it against, and whereas there's like just two tracks on up, uh, Barry Williams show, and my head sounds like like this, that, this, that. Those are two tracks that kind of let down the record, um, but the rest of the record, God, I can even forgive the Nazrat Fateh Ali Khan sample on Signal to Noise now. At least that song went somewhere. It made me feel something. Da da da, big crescendo, you know. This makes me feel miserable because guess what? We're all going to die and there's not enough time. And don't you forget it, but Gabriel can still get an erection when he's on the road to joy. And that's what I got from this record. 
Oh god, I'm gonna get it. everyone's gonna hate this review. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do any of it. Anyway, I think I've wasted enough of your time. Remember, half an hour of your life I've wasted. There's not enough time for this nonsense and gibberish. I've been talking about Peter Gable's IO. The inside, the outside, the left side, the right side, the upside, the downside, the bright side, the dark side. All the sides of the record. So I can get I get them all in there. Like this could be could that be the thumbnail? I don't know. I got the angling wrong. Here you go. Maybe I'll put my hands up. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll just ape. Maybe I, maybe that can be. I can do the. I can ape the cover. Um, so anyway, thank you for watching. I'm ever so. I just want to apologise. I'm ever so sorry if I've upset you, because you think this is the greatest record ever. It's not, and you're wrong. Uh, but I'm, I just want to apologise for it. I don't. I know hard feelings. I don't want you to. You know. I don't want you to get upset because feelings. Feelings are important because of the internet. I ain't got any. And uh, yeah, that's that's the review. What have we talking about? I O Peter Gabriel. I O I O I O. Old man Gabriel had a farm. I O I O I O. It's an all right album, but I don't want to hear it ever again for at least another twenty-one years. Look forward to the next one, Pete. I will see you then. Yeah, good. Um, so that's it. Thank you for watching. My name's been Darren Lock. I O I O I O. I gotta go. Yeah. Ta ta. I forgot to I forgot to mention on the track um, is it playing was it playing for the time or is it so much I can't remember which one it was now I think it might be so much um, he lifts the melody from Cinema Show and yeah it's the melody from the end of Cinema Show he slows it down. <laughs> And it goes through it's through the entire song. So he references Genesis. Yeah. Just forgot to mention that. Because I don't make any notes. I don't write anything down. But I just remembered as as it was. But I forgot to mention the thing. Because that will make me look really cool. If I point out something that nobody else has seen. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'll do prog on this time. Prog on. Prog on. Go on. Go on. Go away.